chapter number two, we talked last week about the, uh, we got down to uh, the burning bush and uh, how it was not consumed. And uh, I, like I said, one reason it wasn't consumed is because we didn't start it. God did. And uh, God's eternal. And uh, that thing didn't burn up. Um, we have to keep putting fuel on the fire, but God is that fuel when it comes to spiritual needs. And uh, so down there about verse number 6, I'm going to start tonight. Good to have you out tonight. Good to have this crowd out tonight. In verse 6 it says, Moreover he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, and God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, uh, for he was afraid to look upon God. In verse 7 is really where I want to start tonight with this thought. This is a calling uh, tonight. This is finishing up the call of Moses. And we're going through the study of the book of Exodus uh, which is a, a redemption would be the theme of it. But verse 7 it says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. Now there's a couple things here. First of all, God saw it. And the eyes of the Lord are everywhere beholding good and evil. And uh, don't think you've ever hid anything from God because you've not. But you know, one thing I thought was uh, kind of ironic where I started Sunday with chapter 2 and verse 11 when Moses, Moses said this, it came to pass those days when Moses was grown, he went out to his brethren and looked upon their burdens. Now, ain't that something that Moses saw the same thing God saw? Yeah. Come on. But he didn't know he was the solution. Yeah. We know God ultimately, but he was the man God would choose. Isn't that ironic? That when you get a man hooked up with God, he sees the burdens that God sees. Yeah. He hears the cry of the people that God hears. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. To, to, uh, um, that's one thing I want God to do is always help me to see people that need help, see people that's hurting, to have that uh, sense that maybe everybody didn't get, maybe every church member didn't get. Maybe uh, That's why I've always said that I know the spiritual condition of this church more than anyone. And it ain't because I'm special or because I stand up here and look at you. It's because, because I'm God's man. And Moses saw it when he was grown. He saw it. But he didn't know that I'll be part of the solution. And so... God's telling him now, after he sees the burning bush on the backside of a mountain, while he's taking care of sheep, he said, hey, I got a good job. I got me a, a woman. I got me a wife. I'm, I'm back here on the backside. I'm just, God, just leave me alone. I'm, let me just take care of my business. Egypt's not my business. I got out of there. And God said, yeah, you got out, but them others can't get out. But I can use you to get them out. All I need is you, amen. And people think it sounds... I don't know what it really sounds like, but it's like when Brother Robert went to Missouri, I said, all we need is God and people to have a church up there. That, when I say that, it sounds, because we always go, well, all we need is God. Yeah, we do. God needs some vocal cords. God needs some feet that can move. God needs some hearts that can be stirred and go out. Listen, I, I'm telling you, God still uses His people. We were bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and spirit, which are God's. God needs our bodies. Like I always said, we depend on the weakest part of us, which is our body, to bring the strongest part to church. Yeah. My spirit don't drive. My spirit can't just run. I ain't no ghost going to drive in here and come in here and worship. We don't need that. I'm other than the Holy Ghost. But, but my spirit is just, you can't see me. It's just a spirit and soul. And it's not the part that drives. This body drives. This body gets up on Sunday mornings. This body's the one that looks at people that needs help. This body's the one people lean on and hug. And shake hands and show compassion. And so God said, I need a man. And when he said, yeah, buddy, when he saw what the Lord, the Lord said, I've seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. God's, God's saying something right there. My people, people which are in Egypt. God saw me when I was in Egypt. And I, I still got to live in this world. But when I was really worldly, God saw me in Egypt. And God had a burden for me. Amen. And thank God he had a preacher down there at Saffle that, 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 that preached, amen. And it, it, it grabbed me, amen. I knew this was the right place to be. But you're in Egypt and heard their cry. Now, Lord, you remember when he said uh, that the Lord inclined unto me and heard my cry and lifted me, brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of Mary Clay in, in, in uh, Isaiah 40? And, or, yeah, 40. And, and, and the Lord inclined unto me and heard my cry? Like I always said, ain't you glad he didn't recline or decline? Yeah. You don't like them little slips that comes out, like I said the other day, that little warning shot that you ain't got no money in your card. You swipe it, that little piece comes out and says declined. I don't like declined. And when, when I'm trying to talk to you, I don't care nothing about reclined. That's what they always said. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's hard to climb a wall that leans towards you or kiss a woman leaning away from you. Y'all think about that for a minute. 
Trust me. I've never cl- I've, I, I can't prove that because I've never climbed a wall that's leaning towards me. I thought y'all get it that I have tried to kiss a woman leaning away from me. So, amen. First part, I'm, I'm not so sure about. Second part, I'm absolutely sure about. So, so we saw right there that the, in this call here that the Lord, he, he, He's seeing the things that now He's, he's reciting it to, to uh, Moses and He says, by reason of their taskmaster. I've heard their cry by reason of the taskmasters for I know their sorrows. This, ain't that something that God knows our sorrows? Amen. Amen. He, when, 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 he, he was a, a man of sorrows. He understood the sorrows. He, he, uh, when he hung on that cross and he was lonely and, and, and uh, the, the people would mock him and strip the clothes off of him, made an open shame. But for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. He understands sorrow. He understands. When we hurt, God understands what it feels like. Because he's, he's, every, everything we've ever felt, he's felt more. And he, he's a, he said he understands, for I know the sorrows. But he heard their cry by the reason of taskmasters. Amen. These, these taskmasters was whipping them and beating them and, and causing them to cry out loud. And boy, let me tell you, old devil beat you up too. And I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up out of that land unto the good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and Hittites and Amorites and Prezerites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression where, wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Man, this, this world is so oppressed. You know, really, we don't, bother, we don't bother the government. We don't bother a bunch of people. Really, really, to be honest, churches are not a threat. I mean, they, we're not out there. We, we, we're, not, we're not really a threat to them. They would just leave us alone and say, well, let them do what they want to do. It, it, but, but they're scared of us. Yeah. Yeah. And it ain't about who we vote for that scares them. It's just they know we're doing something right. They know they're doing something wrong. Yeah. And, and they know we got God on our side. And all they got to do is read through this King James Bible. And they'll understand what's coming their way. Amen. Amen. The oppression. This old world just oppresses us, don't it? Amen. He said in verse 10, And come now, uh, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go into Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? You say, that's a dumb question. We've never been called to pastor or minister. Amen? Because that's the first thing you're going to say. Hold it, God. I, I, not me, you know. And then, then you fill in the blanks for what God... That's why I said, I, I preached before about the burning bush, uh, a message called uh, Beating Around the Bush. That's where it comes from. Amen? Because... You know, he's, he's out there at the burning bush, and he goes, who am I to do it? And, and so God's fixing to explain to him. God's always got to answer. God said, this is the stuff I find hope in. When I read through this uh, in study a while ago and reading it tonight, I find peace in this because I've never felt like I'm the man. I've never felt like I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm like, God, there's a lot of people could have done a lot better at this. But verse 12 says, and he said, certainly I will be with thee. Amen. I, that's all I need. You, 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 you know, a, uh, you, you can quit and you can get mad and you can squall out and you can do a lot of things, say a lot of bad things about this place, but God said, certainly I'll be with you. Amen. And thou art with me. That thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I, I, I thank God for the rod and thank God for the staff in Psalms 23, but I think most of all, he said, thou art with me. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly I'll be with you. Can you imagine, no matter whether you're down there at the cancer clinic, hooked up to the red devil down there, that's what they called some of that stuff used to, that they'd fight cancer with and the chemotherapy, whether you're hooked up to that or whether you're up in the ICU with family members in ICU or whether you're in ICU or whether you're down at the funeral home making arrangements for somebody you love picking out a casket, I want you to know one thing. God said, certainly I'm with you. Amen. You're going to need that one day. You might not need it right now, but why don't, you go, why don't you get a hold of that and go ahead and put it in your heart, hide it in your heart. Put it in your heart because there's going to be a day when Brother Kirk can't get there fast enough and somebody else can't tell you that and you don't know it. But you need to go in there and say, certainly, he's with me. Amen. Boy, it don't look like it right Oh, he is. Yeah. It didn't look like it down in Egypt when them guys are stomping mud and making pyramids for Pharaoh and getting whipped and beat and killed and everything else. It didn't look like God was with them. You think God was with them? He heard their cries. Yeah. And he said, I'm going to deliver them. You know what? Today it may not seem God's going to deliver you out of something, but let me tell you something. He ain't done yet. Uh, you want to say, everybody ought to say amen right there, because certainly I'll be with thee and shall be a token unto thee. 
Now, we know a token is a, is a banner, a sign. It says something. You, you swing an American flag out over in front of your house, it tells me you're American and, and, uh, and uh, unashamed of it, amen. And, and you fly a, a Razorback flag, I'd say, well, they're probably a Razorback fan. Well, no, we got a yard sale cheap, so we just put it up. You don't do that. We put banners that represent who we are and what we are and what we're willing to, willing to stand for, who we support, who we love. That's what a banner is. God said, I'll be your token. He said, I'll be your sign. I'll be your banner. They, they'll see God on him. You know, I, it don't take long to tell you. You could go turn on a, a, a TBN or some of that stuff. I don't even know where you find it anymore on any or I don't guess we got it. But if you turn over all them religious stations, I'll bet you that most of you folks have been around the Bible long enough, around church long enough, and probably got enough common sense still, which it ain't very common, but you probably got enough, to watch a man for five minutes tell whether he's a fake or not. Amen. If he's about health, wealth, or self, I, I'm done with them. Come on. If they're going to tell you you can drink their miracle water, and, and heal you and all this stuff. Water's been a miracle since Genesis 1. Amen? It's a miracle. I need it. I drank it. It fixes my problem. And it's clear. Ain't that something? They, if, they wanna, if, if it's about health, wealth, and they'll tell you how you're going to get rich. If you give, it shall be given. That's the only scripture they know. Give it, it shall be given. So, so health and, and wealth, and when it's all about self, if it's all about you, you better be careful of that. Yes, sir. God's never been a God that's just all about you. He loves you enough to die and save you. But man, He always told us, go to the Decapolis, the, the city of ten. Go tell them what I've done for you. Yeah. That's, that's the God that I serve. Yeah. I can turn on there and I can pick out a fake real quick. But I tell you, a man that's got a token of God, you'll see it. You'll know it. He's got God. When we say man's got God on him, that, don't take that. Don't, don't, don't misuse that. But, but that day that that little donkey came in triumphal entry, they were not shouting and saying Hosanna for the donkey. That's right. That's right. And it was just a donkey. He's just riding a little old donkey coat in there, and, and that thing had never been broke. You sit down on one hadn't been broke, see what it does to you. Yeah, You'll find out you ain't God. But when God got on that donkey, there was something special about it. When God gets on you, you'll know it. Yeah. Everybody was shouting Hosanna, not for the donkey, but thank God the donkey had Christ on him. Yeah. You say, where I'm trying to get to? I'm trying to show you a token. That little donkey wasn't just any donkey. That day when Christ was on him, that was a token. Amen. That was saying, looky here, this is yeah. Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. That thing hadn't been, it didn't balk. It didn't do this. It, did, it hadn't been broke. But you know what else it didn't do? It didn't brag. Look at me, I've got Jesus on me. You don't need a preacher sitting up there telling you, oh, I've got God all over me. He get up here and open this up and preach, you'll know whether or not he's got God all over him. That bunch of fakes on TV and all they want your money and all they want, I ain't got time to fool them. Amen. I'd rather watch fake wrestling. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all look at me like, you mean wrestling's fake? <laughs> no, it ain't. Jerry the King Lawler, he's, he did beat, he hit you 50 times on the nose and never drop a blood. Are you kidding me? I ain't much, but I bet I hit you two or three times and tomorrow you'll wake up and know you've been punched. Amen. Amen. When thou hast brought forth, hold it. Did he not say that he would do? He said, certainly I'll be with thee and shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. They're going to know he's been sent. And, 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 and I'm telling you what, you can't go into a church and go, well, here's my resume and, and I hope you guys find me to be suiting and hope you all think I'm okay and me and my wife and kids so you all can hire me. Are you kidding me? I wasn't looking for a job. I wasn't looking for people to uh, uh, sniff around through and try to figure out, get, hire the FBI and sniff around through me and figure out what I'm all about. Listen, I, 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 you know as well as I did, I, I didn't care nothing about being at any church pastor, but I knew God sent me somewhere. And, and the thing of it was, he, he, he got down here and said that, that, that I have sent thee. You'll, they will know that you've been sent. Now, after 18 years of being here, and God blessing this church, I don't, I don't even have to look in the mirror and wonder if God did send me. God's been a blessing to me. God's, been, God's helped me make some very wise decisions in my ministry. And God's helped me through it. And, and God's been my God. He's never forsaken me. Certainly I'll be with you. He's going to be a token. I don't have to go get a tattoo of a cross. I don't have to wear a necklace with a cross. I don't have to get a shirt, you know, or something. All i got to do is get up here and preach the Word of God. And nobody will walk out and say, I, don't, I think he's a fake. I'll tell you what. One thing I, of the greatest compliment I've ever had by visitors to say, you're real. Amen. You're real. Yeah, it's a real world. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, 
He, shall, he said, when you bring them out, not if. Yeah, that's right. Guys, I'm telling you right now, sometimes you give up too soon. Amen. Right when God was fixing to bring, God was fixing to deliver, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. God said, I'll see you again, but you're going to have my people. Amen. Yeah. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the, the children of Israel, they shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they say unto me, What is his name, and what shall I say unto them? And, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Most churches today, most of your missionary Baptist churches, if somebody had a view of call, wherever that come from, I don't like man-made terms, I don't know what that means, a view of call. But if God sends a man in there and they have their talent show for four or five weeks in a row and try to decide who they like, and they do it on 264 hotline before they ever, it ain't a vote, it's they've got it all took care of when they come in. You motion, you second, we'll get this dude and we don't want that dude because he's this and that and all that stuff like that. You know, uh, this, when he said, I come, he said, I'm just going to tell him that I am sent me. How do you think that would fly in most of them? You come in and say, listen, God sent me here. I am that I am sent me here, and, and I'm to be your next pastor. <laughs> Who's he to think that he, he's, not, he's not even able to vote because he's not a member? Well, you know what you better do? You better, take, you better back up and listen to a man like that because he's got enough confidence to believe in God. Amen. And I, 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 I just... I, you know, that's like I said, some of the system has got so many failures in it because they've, I've, I, I mean, I know what goes on. And it just, but God put me here, and I'm thankful that He said, certainly I'll be with you. Because there's been times like every second I take a breath, I need Him. Maybe He reminds me. Amen. But He told them on, on down here, to, to, they're, they're there to go gather all the elders and bring them in. And uh, verse 17 said, I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt and the land of Canaanites. So he said, I'm going to do it. Verse 19, I'm skipping through. I'm trying to get the next chapter. And he said, and, and, and verse 19 says, And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. He said, he's not going to let you go. Amen. He said, I'm just telling you, he's not going to let you go. You know Satan's not going to let you go without a fight? He, you know why your family, that you want to come to church with you, don't? Because... Because Pharaoh's not going to let them go. Satan's not going to let them go easy. Amen. He said, I'm going to hold on as long as I can, man. I'm telling you, I've took their joy, and I'm having a good time with this thing. He said, but he's not going to let you go. But uh, down here in verse 21 says, And I will give the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Now, what happened here was, he said, you shall not go out empty. So, he, I mean, when you just turn a bunch of people out into a wilderness and they have nothing, you, you're going to get thirsty. You're going to get hungry. Your, 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 your babies are going to need formula. I mean, I can't imagine a famine like that where you can't get formula in a country, but don't that make a lot of sense to you? I mean, I would think that's essential. We went through that for a couple of years. I, it sounds essential. I think somebody ought to be able to do a better job of management. I'm just wondering. But, but so he says, listen, you're going to go out, but, but when you leave, you're going to go, all right, guys, God's delivered us. Get all your stuff. And somebody goes, we don't got no stuff. We're slaves. And they go, you're right. We don't have anything. We don't have anything. But he said, you're going to find favor with the people of Egypt. And he said, and then when you go out, they're going to give you a bunch of stuff. Does that make good sense? It don't. No. But that's why God works. I, I tell you, you know, all of a sudden you leave out from the world and you say, well, you shouldn't take the stuff of the world with you. Well, we need food and we need essentials, amen. It's, it's common sense. But he said, they're going to take you some stuff with them. I, I think that's just, that is so awesome that God used those heathens to give stuff to the people of God that they could sustain life and go out to worship God. It, it don't make sense, you know. I mean, but, but i got to give them credit right there. That's awesome. And God said it would happen. And guess what exactly happens later? Perzak, just like it said. Chapter 4 starts out, and Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Who makes, who died left you, boss? Uh, you're, you're just a dictator. You know, if a pastor ever leads, he's a dictator. He's narcissist. Um, he's all these things. You know, they got, they got all the terms, and that's fine. I've, I've heard them, and I'm good with it. Uh, they're going to call you all kinds of stuff because you're leading. So would you rather trump mud for Pharaoh and die in Egypt and be buried in Egypt and eat what they tell you to eat and drink what they tell you to drink and let them whip you every day and beat you, or would you rather follow that man named Moses that said, I've met with God. I'm going to take my chance on that man of God. And if he's wrong, God will take care of him. 
but I'm still going to have my liberty. And the Lord said unto him, What is it that is in thy hand? And he said, A rod. Don't you know, he, he's standing there holding a stick, thinking, this has nothing to do with this conversation. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I, I, my, one of my biggest drawbacks was, in the whole deal was, I, I thought, well, I'm not equipped. You know, I just, I, I don't know my Bible as good as I should, and I don't know all this and that. I'm, I thought of all the things that, and I can't speak well, I can't do this, I can't do, I, I thought of all the excuses beating around the bush. And, but all of a sudden, God uses the most unique things. He goes, what's that in your hand? He goes, it, it's a rod. Don't you know what he's thinking? So, what's the deal with that? Verse 3 says, And he said, Cast it on the ground. He cast it on the ground. It became a serpent. Moses fled from before it. That, that's just natural. That's natural. The rod turning into a serpent is supernatural, but him fleeing from it is what? Natural. There's a few idiots like me that will catch one. Daddy grabbed one. He's 85. He grabbed one the other day. The guy comes down there and helps take care of him some. He, Alan got down there and said, Oh, he just panicked over an old rat snake. Daddy said, I just went over and took my foot, put it on his head, and grabbed it behind the ears and picked it up and said, You scared of this? Out? He, well, he said, Just screaming, running. Full grown man, running, screaming. And that was, that, was, that was scriptural to run. So when you run from a snake, that's scriptural, okay? Me, no. When I go up and. It, but you always, you know, I mean, if I got round eyes, unless they're a coral snake or something, which ain't around here, if it's round eyes, they're non poisonous. If they're diamond eyes, they are poisonous. But you've got to get real close to look at your eyes. I mean, you like you catch them and go, oh, no. And the proper way to release snakes is not just throw them down. I learned that the hard way. Me and Sandy were talking about it the other day. And um, one day I had a snake, and I had it caught, and had it wrapped in my hand. I got done with it, and I just threw it like that. Well, it was hanging on. All I let go of was his head. Well, you know, it's chin on my hand like a... a ear of corn, you know, or something like that. Well, then I did like a cat with a wet foot, man. I went, Bap! and started, and that sucker just, I threw it, no telling how far. That snake hit the ground and thought, what in the world? Well, he had round eyes. Uh, one of the guys in the rice field that one time was tromping around out there, and I could see the rice moving, and I took my stick and poked around. I thought, that looks like just a water snake. And I just poked it down and grabbed it and picked it up and looked at it. He got, well, he done started running back. He said, dude, I'm out of here. And I looked at him and said, it's got round eyes. It's not poisonous. And I just threw it back down. He goes, what? I got to walk back through where it is. I said, it won't hurt you none. Amen. So, amen. So I gave you all a snake lesson for the night. But he fled from before it. Is that common? That, that's natural. The, the, the rod is supernatural. Because natural part was when Moses' flesh did what flesh does, it ran from the snake. When God did what he does spiritually, what he do? He turned a rod into a snake, right? Now, that's pretty. Hey, can I borrow your, can I borrow your stick for a minute there, brother? He likes hitting people with it. There's a lot of blood on this. There's DNA all over his thing. If, if you say, I ain't going back down there. I just don't believe he's called to God. And I don't believe that he's, you know, he gets up there and talks about funny stuff. And he's just a comedy show. And if I was up here preaching and I threw it on the ground, it turned into a snake. You'd probably start coming on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights and Sundays and everything. And you'd be in the choir. And you'd, be, you'd be cleaning up after we leave and all that. You'd go, man, that dude's got the power of God. Well, God's not still doing that with a sign. And that's what I'm going to show you tonight. Right. Now, the, we got to get through this. I'll let you have this before you leave. Amen. <laughs> Unless Benny Hinn walks through here, brother. I'm, I, I got faith God can heal you, but we ain't got a pile of, of wheelchairs out front. And he said, so in verse 4, And the Lord said unto Moses, he'll check, a, he'll check a preacher out good first. Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. Well, he's going to get closer to it than he was. Because he, he ran from it. So to grab it by the tail, unless his arms are 30, 40 foot long, he's not going to grab it unless he does what? Gets close to the problem. God said, you'll never be a deliverer. You'll never be a pastor until you can get close to the problem. You can't run from every problem. Well, that family's having problems with that family. You, you run from it, I'm telling you what's fixing to happen. Then that family's going to have problems with that family, that family, that family. Then that person's got problems with that family. Next thing you know, your church is split. And you got all your clicks because you sat there and you flee, you, you fled from the problems. Uh, nobody likes confrontation, but my goodness gracious, this church is worth some of us adults sitting down across from the desk in there and fixing our problems. Y'all starting to believe me more. I got this. I'll shake it at you. Amen. They told me there'd be more people here than I can shake a stick at, but it ain't on Wednesday night. I, Sunday mornings it gets harder. 
He said, take it by the tail. Now, why would God... God knows snakes which in the mouth is on. And it's not, it's not the tail. You grab a snake by the tail, I can, I can risk... Uh, naturally, naturally, I can tell you exactly what's fixing to happen. It's going to bite you. It don't matter. It can, be, it can be a friendly little old garter snake. And when they get mad, finally you can make them mad enough, but they'll finally turn around and bite you. An old hog nose will roll over and play dead, and you grab it along, you, you mess around with it long enough, it'll turn around and bite you if you grab it by the tail. You, if you grab one by the tail, you better be moving fast and keep your momentum and keep it from biting you. But he grabbed by the tail, and he put forth his hand and caught it. This is the man that just got done running from it going, I'm scared of snakes! And God said, get over and grab it. And he goes, are you kidding? <laughs> Beating around the bush again. And he caught it and became a rod in his hand. In verse 5 it says, and he caught it and it became a rod in his hand. Now there's a colon right there and goes into verse 5. That's a continuation. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. He said, they're going to believe you when you can grab a snake. Now, um, I don't remember, um, uh, oh, uh, what's his name? The FBI teacher, he, he teaches it different, um, whatever his name is down in Louisiana. Yates, yeah. Yates, yeah. Uh, you know, he tried to explain it and say that there's some snakes that can stiffen out. And all. No. What did it say? What did it say? What did it say? Did it say these were snakes that stiffened out and they looked like a, you know, I, I, I don't care what, whether, he's a smart man, but I'm a Bible believer above being smart. And he said, take it by the tail. He put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand. What did? The serpent. He reached down and grabbed it by the tail and it became a what? Rod. It didn't become a stiff, stiff snake. It became a rod. It went from a rod to a snake and from a snake back to a rod. Now, y'all listen to me now. I've not got all the degrees, but I'm smart enough to figure out if God can't take a stick and turn it into a snake and turn it back to a stick, I'm going to go looking for me another God. I don't need a snake that stiffens out and looks like a rod. It ain't, it ain't look like. That's what's wrong with your fake churches today. There's a lot of stuff looks churchy. I'm fixing to show you what's going on with, the, with all that. And, and, and the Lord uh, uh, said... Furthermore to him, put now thy hand in thy bosom. And he put forth his hand in his bosom. When he took it out, it was leprous as snow. Now that'd be like you, healthy tonight, walking in here, and all of a sudden you stick your hand in there and pull it out, and it's got cancer. I mean, I, I'm not talking about just any cancer, but, but terminal cancer. And he said, put forth thine hand in thy bosom again. And he put forth his hand in his bosom again, and plucked out his bosom. And behold, it was turned as, again other, as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken unto the voice of the first sign, they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Now, I'm going to start right there. I want, I'm going to say something about this. Um, a sign. A sign. They, they still, people get on TV and they make you believe these signs. And, you know, oh, I've got a sign from God. You know, uh, this happened. The sky turned red and this happened. Or I had a dream. I had, and I believe the dreams of the Old Testament. I believe the signs. But let me clarify myself. The sign, uh, turn to 1 Corinthians one twenty two. That's We'll just fix this. There ain't no sense of me getting up here and telling you without just showing you. Like I said, I, I'm, I, I, I may not have the education that uh, you think I should have, but I believe it's Bible. Amen. And I, I know what 1 Corinthians one twenty two says, and I can quote it. Now, you're going to help me now. All right? You're going to, this is participation. If you've got a license plate that says Arkansas on it, that's probably an Arkansas tag. Amen? That's what it says, what it means, and it is what it is, all right? It, you say, that sounds too simple. I know. That's, maybe I should make this harder for you to understand. You go, boy, he's so smart, but we don't got any idea what he's talking about. But what's it saying? in 1 Corinthians 1.22? Um, Jody Davis, read it real loud. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay, what's the Jew require? Require. A sign? They require a sign, right? Okay, so in other words, they don't believe anything until they have a what? They see a sign and they believe it. Where do you think that car is from? Well, the tag says it's from Arkansas. That's a sign. That's, we go around a curve and the sign points this way. We're putting faith in that sign that the curve's going to go that way. All right? So they require a sign. Now look in uh, 1 Corinthians 14. Is it 14? Yeah, 14. Now, 14.22. Who's made it there? 
14, 22. You there? Read it real loud. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. The prophesying serveth not for them that believeth not, but for them which believe. Okay. So it said tongues. So tongues were for what? Sign. Who's the sign for? What did it say about, what did it say the tongues for the, for the did it say the unbelieving? So until they saw a sign, they wouldn't believe. Why did, why did God start out the very first thing in the ministry of Moses, other than saying, you're the man. He goes, I'm not the man. You are the man. But God, ain't no but about it. He said, I'll be a token. I'll give you a token. You know what that token was? That was the start of it. Because he said, the signs are for unbelieving Jews. We can, we can fill that blank in with the two scriptures that I've given you, right? Who's the sign for? Unbelieving Jews. Did they say anything about people from Rosie? And, no, it didn't. I don't need a sign. I've got a Savior. I, I don't need a sign. I'm not a Jew. I, don't need, I do not need a sign. Okay, so if it's for an unbelieving Jew, so who, who's, who's the people in bondage? The Hebrew children, the Jews, the Israelites. So what do they need? Because he said, what did Moses say? They will not what? Believe. God said, when you take that rod and you take your hand with the leprous hand and you show them that, they will what? Believe. So why would you think that you've got to come to church and see a man walk on his hands and flop on the floor or run across top of pews or, or do something and you go, oh man, I tell you, God's all over that guy. Well, you can go down to the circus and find somebody can do stuff like that. That don't prove God's... I've seen preachers get up here and never walk away from this right here. And they look straight, look you straight in the eye and preach the devil out of you. God's on them as much as... Uh, Jim Chandler won't move around very much his life, but my goodness gracious, he's got God on him. He'll preach God with authority. Uh, there's a, a black preacher down in Houston. Man, that rascal will never leave right here. Power all over him. You ain't got to run and jump on stuff. It's just everybody's got different personalities and presentations. That ain't what... They, you're not going to believe because I move around a lot or don't move around a lot. You're not going to believe because I, I, I'm, I, I'm a, a, by my personality, I'm a, a funny person, a witty person, and joke around. That's not what... You know what's going to make you believe in this day and age? Because we're not Jews. It said they seek after wisdom or knowledge. That's what we... Well, you know what, you know what will do that? The power of God's Word. That's what works. That's how you know a man. The token today is the power of God's Word that's on a man. And, and when Moses stood up there, he's like, they ain't going to believe me. Why, how in the world could one man walk up in the uh, whatever, how many million, two or three million or whatever, how many million of them they was, how can he walk up there and go, hey, everybody, I'm fixing to take us out of here. And they go, yeah, you're drunk, get out of here. He said, all right, you want to make fun of me? You don't believe me? Throw that down, boop, there's a serpent. Then the Jew goes, hmm. Well, in, in, in a, uh, as, the, as a, I always said that, the book of Acts was a, 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 transform, a transforming a book in the Bible. It's a transformation from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Y'all know that as well as I do. It starts out, it gets to the very end of the, of the Old Testament into the New Testament. Now, not just by the books, but by where it was after Christ died. And, and, and you can even look in Acts at the Jews, what they, uh, where is it, Acts 10, 11? Yep. Acts 10.44 is where I usually... Yep, 10.44. Now listen to this. Now this is Cornelius. And, and you know Peter said, Now listen, I can't go to them. But God said, What I've made clean is clean indeed. Amen. That's real important because he said, Now the gospel's going to the Gentiles. <laughs> well, the Jews will never believe a Gentile can be saved. They'll never believe that God came to the Gentiles and they can be full of the Holy Ghost. You want proof that we can be? You want proof that just an old boy, girl, just an old plow boy from Strawberry, you want proof? Okay. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. You, you, it's life-changing. God's word is life-changing. That's Christ. When you get saved, the Holy Ghost comes into you. Amen. And the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard his word. Amen. Amen. That's... You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, right in Acts 1.8. I mean, he's saying it's fixing to happen. Well, by, by chapter 10, boom, there it is. Peter said, I, I'm not going to the Gentiles. He said, yeah, you are going. And, 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 and Paul ends up going to the Gentiles. But verse 45 says, and they of the circumcision, who's that? Jews. It's Jews. They were the ones who were to be circumcised on the eighth day. Okay, so to the Jews, let's say that, which believed were astonished 
as many as came with Peter, because that the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, then answered Peter. He goes on to the next verse. What, what was that? When they heard them speak in tongues, and you say, well, was that hostile, and all that stuff? It don't say that. Even in, the, in Acts, the start of Acts, there was some 20-something different dialect, different languages that spoke, and they all understood the same language. Not going to happen unless God does something. If we had a man to come in here tonight that all he spoke was Spanish, and he got up and preached us the best message that we ever didn't hear, it's just tingling brass, and it's, that's all it is. Yeah. Sitting there going, Amen! You know, you think, I think that guy's probably, and he's just speaking in Spanish. But if he got up here and preached the whole message in Spanish, and we all understood it, to a Jew, that was like, whoo, that's a sign. But we got interpreters today. We got, we got we, you know, God, God can do what God does with what we got, and that, thank God for it. But the Jews would have sat there and went, gosh, I hear this guy, and I'm my language. That's why the day of Pentecost had the, the other tongues, had the unknown tongue, that unknown uh, uh, speech, is, was because it was, I believe it was God put all that there that day, all them people to hear, hear and understand. But when he come to the Gentile, them Jews sit there, and they, that's, they say that's how people them Jews are. They'll stick their nose up there, and they, they're, they're very proud. But when they seen the Holy Ghost fall on them and they spoke with tongues, ooh, 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 something happened. They said, my goodness, those Gentiles have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Holy Ghost fell in here. Now, that, this is a transformational uh, of, of, of book. I understand that. And I mean, I can get you the smartest Bible scholars. I'd put Derek Collins up against most of them. I, I mean, I, I would put him up against anybody I know. Amen. And he'll tell you that that's, that book of Acts is transforming into, into the New Testament and the church age. And we know that. Because we know that the church was empowered right there in the book of Acts. Now, in saying that, so back to where we're at, and I'm, I, but we're about to get done, but back in the book of Exodus, Moses, so, so Moses said, they won't believe me. God said, they will. He said, I know them Jews. Them Jews require a sign. He said, they'll believe you. Amen. Just by stick. Can you imagine that? Now, we're going to see later. Let me say this right here. I think it's a good place to say it. Um, later that when Aaron and them come before Pharaoh, and he throws the rod down before Pharaoh, right? Or, or the, the, he gets the enchanters and the, 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 uh, the, all the, yeah, the magicians, enchanters and all them come in, and they, they, he throws a rod down, they come in, throw their rods down, they become serpents. Explain that to me. Hmm. So why did God let that happen? Well, let me say this. I believe with all my heart there's churches out there, and I'm not talking about churches that's a mile from here. I'm talking about there's churches out there that do some weird Kool-Aid drinking. There's some weird stuff that goes on. It has nothing to do with God at all. I'm not talking about your neighbor. I'm not talking about your family that don't go here just because you don't go here. But I'm telling you, even some of them, they can put Baptist on their sign. And they can, they can do some things to make you think God's really in that place. They got their serpents they can throw down, and, boy, and, and, and God allows it. God says, if you guys are going to believe a sign, because you're not supposed to, but if it takes a sign for a church to go, oh, God's all over that church down there, boy, that, that, we saw this. We saw, when they start that, you better think about it. They, they saw something. And when they see a big crowd, they just automatically think, boy, that thing is, that, that church on fire and growing. That ain't what makes Maple Springs what it is with God. Amen. It ain't a big crowd. Thank God for a big crowd that wants to, but y'all know what it is. Yeah. It's, it's that word right there. Amen. But let me ask you this. So if they throw their serpent, I mean, their sticks down, they become a serpent. That's pretty powerful. But then all of a sudden, Aaron, what, they, when they threw their rod down, it swallowed up theirs. Amen. I, I'm for the one that can swallow up all the others. Yeah. I'm for the gospel oh, yeah. that can swallow up all the other gospels. Amen. I'm for the church that has the power over the other serpents. Amen. Now, that's impressive, though. Yeah. And, and, and so there is, a, there is an element of magic. There's an element of weird stuff that Satan does. Uh, Adrian Rogers talked about it. He said he'd been in some of them other countries where they believed all kinds of stuff like that, magicians and stuff. And he said, man, he said, I knew a missionary that brought some of their stuff home with them one time, some stuff from that other country. And he said, man, it, they were, the devil was in them things. That dude couldn't leave. He went and burned them, got them out of his house because he said they was just, I mean, if, if you make an idol out of something and make a god out of it, I don't want it in my house. I'm telling you, I, I, I can't even tell you the stories that I, I know because... There's things I can't even tell you about Satan and things in my life that I, I really, I, I don't feel liberty. I've never preached it in 18 years. And I've seen some things happen. And I'm not a weirdo, y'all know that. But I warn you and I teach you and preach you. But if I told you them examples, there'd be people 
on YouTube and everything else that say he's he must have got real drunk or legalized dope got to him finally or he's just something wrong with him. And that's literally what people would say. But I'm telling you, there's some evil spirit in some stuff. And there's a devil doing things at your home, in your life, that you, you just need to be real sober and vigilant. If it looks like, if they throw their sticks down, they become serpents. I, I'm, I'm going to doubt it the whole time until I see God swallowed up. He's, them guys even in the book of Acts, what, Acts 5 or so, said that all them others had come along and said, oh, they've been all these different religious movements, but if it be of God, you can't stop it. Amen. If you've got, you got a bunch of, bunch of these that's from the devil, they can be stopped. But from God, it can't be stopped. Now, the next thing Moses did, and I'm, I'm just going to throw this thought in your head, the next thing Moses did was said, I'm not equipped to do what you want me to do. God, you've got it messed up. Now that, now that you showed me what you can do, I'm going to tell you what I can't do. Now, see, that's not what kind of preacher you want to, to bring in that you call that has no confidence. My confidence is not cockiness, and sometimes it may come across as the same, but it's not. I'm fully confident that when I, when I signed up that first Sunday and came down here in, in 2004 in April, I never doubted my calling in 18 years. I've never doubted. I didn't ever, the next Sunday, I didn't go, what am I doing? I, I'm not supposed to be here. I've never doubted it in 18 years. And when I do, I think I need to go on and do something else because, God's, because God gave me confidence, not cockiness, confidence. He gave me a Bible. I'm confident in him. He's given me a people that I love and they're committed Amen. and it makes all the difference. Amen. Now, I'm not an eloquent speaker. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to, you know, you can say what you want to and you don't have to make fun. I, I can't stand to hear me preach on YouTube or radio. or anything. It just it sounds... I don't know, just sound like an idiot. So I know what y'all listen to, because I've heard myself. And it, it, it is not eloquent. And um, uh, my wife always said that I dumbed down my, my education, because she's like, you've got a college degree, come on, and a Bible college degree. You, you, you use so many country terms, and you just try to sound dumb. And uh, I'm not pretending to be dumb. I'm really pretty dumb. But... Uh, <laughs> But I appreciate her actually saying that really you're not as dumb as you try to act sometimes because, you know, I use words like again it and, uh, you know, all these words, these country terms. And uh, she's like, you know, you could do better than that. But, you know, we're country folks, so let's just be what we are. But, but, but Moses said, I'm not eloquent, neither here, here, uh, heretofore nor since has been spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. I'm not slow of speech. I'm not. I can, I can put, I'd put more in a 15-minute radio sermon than some preachers can grunt out in an hour. Y'all know that. If you, ever can, if you ever got something you want to do, count the words in one of my radio sermons and see how many words is in that and then test. Uh, I ain't even going to tell you what radio. I ain't going to say nothing else. I don't want to sound me. But, but all of a sudden, uh, um, now I like this down in verse 13. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. God send anybody but me. I can't speak well. So whoever you send, thumbs up, I'm for them. I'll like them on Facebook. And I'll, I'll pat them on the back and say, Good preaching, preacher. I'm for them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. He said, he's going to be glad I called you to take them out. And he can speak good where you speak. Use the people to help you where you're weak. And I got my weaknesses, and I try to use Brother Shannon and, and, and Sister Sandy and anybody else around me uh, to, to, for my weaknesses. I have to use other people to try to be strong. And I will promise you, I've never been nervous in 18 years to preach the Word of God. I've never walked in anywhere that they told me to preach and been nervous. I, I, that's just God took care of that. I've got my problems, but that's not one of them. But I have, so I have confidence. But where I'm weak, I have to depend on people to help me out. I thought that out of, um, between all our song leaders and Brother Shannon and everybody else, I could get somebody else to read announcements better than I could. <laughs> I'm not eloquent. I cannot do announcements. I can't do announcements. I can't do, if you ask me to go somewhere and, and say a few words, I can't, I'm no good at that. I just really ain't. I mean, I, I just ain't. It's not me. 
But preaching's me. It's it's what God's done. All right. And um, you know, uh, uh, last night the uh, uh, Judge Griffin had called me and he said, "Hey, we're having a uh, the election. Whatever they do, I don't know. I've never been to one." He said, "Won't you come up here and 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 open us up prayer?" And I said, oh, "You bet you." He said, "So you're involved in politics? I am when a politician asks me to come pray at their party, and there ain't no alcohol or nothing else going on. I'm I'm for that. And he's been good to me and been good to this church. I feel like I, he deserved me to go up there." And, uh, and say a prayer for them. I thought it was great. I, I had no problem with that at all. But a little fungus mad. I about got them. We brought them in here, amen. They're, they're a plague, amen. amen. So he said, I can't do it. But he said, listen, Aaron will be proud in his heart. But look at verse 15, I'm done. And that's how speaking to him and put words in his mouth. See, that's Bible. We always talk about putting words in your mouth. That's Bible, man. There's a lot of this Bible. We don't put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth, and we'll teach you what you shall do. Now, I skipped over, and I shouldn't have skipped over, over where he said uh, that I will be with your mouth, in verse 12. And, 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 I mean, when he said he wasn't eloquent, the Lord said unto him, Who made man's mouth? See, so God can equip you. Amen. But a lot of times the problem is not... Let me say this. A lot of times the problem with preachers, and God called people, that you, have a, you feel like you've got a ministry, it's, it's not the tongue... It's not the eyes or ears, and it's not even the brain. It's the heart. Amen. Moses had a heart, yep. and it don't have to be eloquent. What came out of his mouth is some of the most powerful. He penned the first five books in the Bible by the inspiration of God. Come on, guys. That's God all over that thing. And, 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 he's, and, and it's, it's all about the heart. God called his heart. I, I told somebody after this awful shooting in Texas, and it just it still makes me sick in my stomach. I don't even want to... I mean, I just... I cannot imagine waiting through the blood of them little kids in there for the first responders and the, the, te- the ones that live through it have got to deal with that the rest of their life, walking through the blood of them little bitty kids. I just, but I said, told somebody, you know, they started in all their, their pol- political stuff, and I said, whoa, 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 it's not what's in that boy's hand that was the problem. It's what was in his heart. We, we got to deal with the heart. You ain't going to fix this problem with, there is no law in the books that's going to stop what's going on in our country. There is a law in my hand that can stop what's going on in our country. The first four people God created, one of them killed the other one. 25% killed 25%. The first four people. You think that out of four people, well, you know, we could make it a little while before somebody kills somebody. That's how evil man is. And we're all capable of a lot of things. It's not what's in our hands. It's what's in our heart. And we, these people need Christ. These people need the Lord. They need somebody to love them. They need, you know, and, and, and I mean, I'm... I, I, I just thought I'd throw that in there. But it's from the heart. Moses' heart was in the right place. Let's stand tonight. It's, we're good to go.